fantastic. So again, welcome to everyone. And those of you that just came in, I'm Mark. This is my colleague, Susan. And Rose is with us as well. And Rose is currently undertaking the Diploma of Stage and Screen Performance. So I just want to make some um, overall statements about the course. Uh, NIDA is very well known for its um, three year, for our three year um, Bachelor of Arts in acting. In fact, NIDA opened its doors over, you know, 60 years ago. We've been running courses for about 62 years. And if you came to NIDA back in the late 1950s, you could do one of two courses. You could either do an acting course or you could do a technical course. So jump forward 60 years and isn't it fantastic that we're actually able to offer talented young people um, a slightly bigger range than two courses. And uh, I think it's really important in the 21st century for NIDA to be able to um, meet the needs of the entertainment arts industry through uh, the specialisms that we now offer. We're constantly reviewing what it is that we do and making sure that we're we're meeting uh, the needs of industry, and indeed our diploma level courses have only been around for about five years, and they arose out of that need. So you have a choice. If you're interested in performance, you can come to NIDA and undertake uh, in-depth three years full-time actor training, or if you're interested in performance, we have a, I would call it in-depth, one year full-time diploma of stage and screen performance. I think I meant to change the slides. Okay, so this is uh, the one-year diploma course. What is a little bit different about this course from maybe other um, uh, acting courses is, is that it does exactly as the title says. It is 50% uh, the context of live performance and 50% screen. So we, we wanted to very deliberately create a course that was quite different to the three-year actor training course and give uh, appropriate young people the opportunity to develop their skills and knowledge in both of those areas, in both stage and screen. And in actual fact, if you do this course, that happens from week one. I think that's the case, isn't it, Rose? Did you start doing stage and screen from week one? <laughs> yeah, I think it, honestly on the first, um, after we have our like orientation week, on the first day we were already given a task, um, a performance that we had to do in two weeks. So they put you straight into the deep end, which I think is fantastic because we're here for a year and you want to get the most out of it. And the photo that you see up there, um, that was our performance that we did in two weeks coming into NIDA. So they put you in it straight away, you're outperforming, you're in front of a camera, you're working with tutors. It's truly an incredible experience and I don't think that in The Bachelor they put you straight away on a stage. And you're with these people in your group of 24 or however many people and yeah it's it's amazing we got to be different characters as you can see in the makeup and it was a makeup showcase for the diploma of makeup um and special effects yeah so they do put you there straight away <laughs> let's have a look at the next slide and see what comes up there we go a year, so we're saying what's unique about this course is, is it's a year full time. And uh, whilst a year is not three years, you can imagine the depth and breadth of training at NIDA for three years is phenomenal because uh, that affords you all kinds of experiences. However, we can fit a lot into a year. The other thing to note is, is that this course, uh, in terms of its delivery, runs Mondays to Thursdays. And that was, again, a very deliberate choice. We wanted to have an offering that was different to a five-day-a-week, three-year course, because we understand that some people have, you know, th there are different students who appreciate different kinds of training. 
and four days a week full time uh, for a year, we can fit, as we're saying, a lot into that year. It does give you the opportunity on Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays to do other things, to, to have a part-time job, to do have you know meet family commitments, to have other in pursue other interests, and also um, usually actually to prepare stuff for the following week. So when we say a year and full time, it is that, but uh, it's Monday to Thursday. So I wanted to let you know about that as well. And we've mentioned that it's pretty much 50-50 stage and screen. Um, we have some terrific tutors uh, who, uh, who take on those various disciplines. Uh, we're very lucky here at NIDA in that we get access to uh, industry professionals who are also very good teachers. So I'm just thinking of, Rose, in your, your year this year, Garth, for example, who's one of your regular acting coaches, is now doing a play at the Ensemble Theatre. So it's very important to us for, to include people who have teaching qualifications, who are expert teachers, but who are also practitioners. We like the idea that the people that you're learning from are people who are doing the, um, you know, the, have, have the expertise because they're doing it. Uh, so you'd find that with a lot of your teachers in this course, they're coming and going from industry and, and into the classroom. Okay, another uh, element that is unique to this particular course is as well as, um, you know, identifying processes and, and methodologies for acting in terms of responding to scripts and finding out about how the production process works for a live context or for the screen context, we also put a lot of emphasis on... Um, on developing uh, original works. And I know Rose is currently in a, in a term where we've had a lot of emphasis in this term. I mean, the screen stuff has continued, but I know that this term you've had improvisation, you've had devising, you've had some collaborations with the MFA directors, and all of that has been about how we might generate and create original stuff. And we think that's important too. We think it's important to teach you how to pick up a script and how to, um, you know, how to make that a part of yourself and make it real for yourself and to find out about how shows and films and screen work. But at the same time, we think in, in the 21st century, it's really important that um, a cohort learns how to generate original stuff and create original stuff. Uh, I don't know, Rose, if you expected as much devising when you came, but how have you been going with that? Have you been enjoying that process? Yeah, look, I, I came into the course straight out of high school, so, you know, you do a lot of, you know, self-devising in high school and things like that, and coming into the course, I didn't think we would be doing as much, but it is so different, and... Already, you know, we had a project with the Masters of Fine Arts director students where we had to um, collaborate with them and devise a piece of theatre. And that was an incredible opportunity and it really just took my mind and it just completely reverted my definition of self-devising work. And, you know, we incorporated things of live cinema um, improvisation techniques, you know, we wrote our own monologues and it not only teaches you, you know, those essential skills, but so many people in, um, in our class have now interest in things like writing, which is such an important element of devising as well. Yeah, so it's definitely been an incredible um, opportunity to get to work with, you know, those directors who are going to go out in the industry and who are out in the industry um, now, so it was, yeah, definitely, definitely an incredible opportunity, Mark. No, thank you. And, and Rose talking about that project, it is one of the things, and you'll probably hear this in other talks, it's one of the things that actually we're, we're so lucky with here at NIDA in that because in this one building, 
we have people learning about such a range of um, specialisms. You know, we've got costume makers, stage managers, sound technicians, directors, writers, actors, musical theatre people, because everybody comes into this building every day, it means that we can at times have collaborations with each other. So yes, if you're a student here in this course, you've got your dedicated room, you've got your dedicated teachers and coursework, but what we like to mix it up with is these collaborative opportunities. So you get to meet students in other cohorts, you get to meet other teachers, you get to meet industry guests, and you get to, yeah, just collaborate with a whole range of people that hopefully you will then uh, have relationships with once you finish your training and, and move into the industry. So I think that's pretty unique to NIDA that we, we, we have just such a range of disciplines being explored um, in the building. I better hit the next slide. I think we've covered that, haven't we? We've covered the, that it's um, practical training and it's got the two contexts, the stage and the screen. Yeah, and this, this little slide just furthers also the, the notion that the production process is something you learn about too. I, I'm imagining most of the people in the audi audience here today who are thinking about this course as a, as a possible pathway of study um, would be here for the very uh, real and pure acting element that it does afford. But I think one of the things that's unique to the industry is that it is very collaborative uh, industry. If you're a writer or you're a painter, uh, often you can do these things, you know, in a very private context. I mean, maybe they're collaborative in other ways as well, of course. But I think uh, creating, um, you know, shows and making uh, videos and, and creating performance for a range of media, you know, screen, digital, it really is a collaborative uh, endeavour. So what we hope to give you in the year that you're with us is a real uh, sense of how to uh, do things together with others so that you've got your goal, you know what you want to do, you know what your part is, is in it, but at the same time, uh, it gives you the opportunity to make sure you're developing those collaborative skills, not just your own individual skills, which of course are really important, but you've got to learn both. There you go, I covered that one, didn't I? We do get, we do, you do have uh, ongoing um, NIDA teachers that you work with regularly and we bring, we, we really like to think that we're constantly on the lookout for who's around, who would be good to bring in as guests and, uh, and, and, and mix things up a bit. So I think we've had some guests already this year, haven't we? Yeah, we, we've had lots of guests come in um, who are currently working in the industry, which is really amazing because we're constantly getting the new updated knowledge. Like recently we got to work with Simon Burke, who um, is an amazing actor and he's currently in Moulin Rouge. And he, we just finished our session with him, which was really nice. We've had Guy Simon come in, and next term we get to work with Home and Away director Danny, yeah. which is which we're all very excited for. So I think that that's one of my favourite parts of the course is that we're constantly, you know, we've got our core tutors, but then there are so many people that we get to work with: writers, directors, producers, actors. Um, which I think is a big, big, big bonus. Let's have a look at the next slide. What's there? Oh, yeah, that's the showcase. That's how the course finishes. So Rose is currently in term two of the training. We break the year up into three teaching terms. And in the third term, we spend a chunk working on what we call is our showcase. And... Uh, because in a year-long course, we, we can't fit in the productions. If you're doing the three-year course at NIDA, uh, in the second half of your second year and then in your third year, you get to be in, in stage productions. But in a year, we, we're not able to fit that in. But the showcase will actually feel like a, uh, a production. We do it in one of our venues. Uh, we invite 
a whole lot of industry people, agents, managers, directors, producers, other performers. It's a way of us, um, it's a way of us keeping our connections with industry. We want people to give us feedback, tell us what's happening out there, what their needs are, what kind of performers they need. We want to make sure we continue to uh, you know, uh, train people in a way that's appropriate for current practices. So it's a fantastic event where we have a whole lot of audiences come in and watch the current group of students at work. I mean, as Rose said, there are some mini projects along the way, you know, like the makeup showcase that you were involved in that give you an opportunity to perform, but it's the um, end of year showcase that's kind of the major work, really, for, um, for this particular course. So that happens kind of towards the end of the course in, in the third term. Ah, that tells us, yes, we, we for this course, uh, this course is not open to uh, international students, so I don't know if anybody, if that breaks anyone's heart, if anyone's come to us today who is not an Australian citizen. Uh, with the NIDA BFAs, the bachelor courses, we are able to take a limited number of international students, but for our year-long diploma students, they are open to um, Australian and New Zealand citizens. So I just want to let you know, just to get that out there. What happens next? Oh, there's Robbie, look, in the showcase <laughs> for the makeup earlier this year too. Oh, of course, some of you will be going, how do we, some of you will go, what's the next step? I mean, the thing is, today is hopefully answering some of your questions about um, what it might feel like to do the course here. But um, online, we've got a whole lot of information about how you prepare. This year, you, you may or may not be aware, is uh, Liz, who you met earlier, has um, decided that it's appropriate to drop any application fee. So this year, if you're interested in applying for the course, you can do so free of charge. And your initial um, way of uh, telling us that you want to be considered for the course is through a video application. So if you go onto our website, that takes you through all of the step-by-step um, -step details as to how to do that. But basically, we, we want to meet you initially through video. You tell us a bit about who you are, what your interests are, what you've done, and then you present two um, pieces to camera. And for this course, they can be pieces that you find, you know, from a play, from a screenplay, or they can be something that you've created yourself. There's no hard and fast rule about where the material comes from for this course. You're allowed to be as creative as you like and just present something so we can get to see you in performance. So that's the kind of general tone of it. And then uh, what we do is, is a number of us here at NIDA then look at all of those videos and then we get in touch with you to let you know if we think that you're going to be a good fit for the course and the course is going to be a good fit for you and then we, we probably will then meet you for what's called a call back uh, uh, you know, audition and interview. So it's really in two stages. There's the video submission and then for uh, quite a number of people will then get to meet you face to face. That's our plan. Last year, you know, all our plans changed <laughs> because of, you know, we couldn't travel, we couldn't see so many people together in the one room, so we did a little more on video than we, we might have wanted to, but this year we're hoping to see as many people as we can face to face. Uh, so that's a little bit about the um, how to prepare. You can see the, the fees. There's the um, fees that some, a lot of students like to um, see if they're eligible for the government student loan and pay their course fees that way. Uh, some people do pay what's called upfront, term by term. You know, that's a very personal choice, but I'd say most students, um, you know, uh, have, have the um, access to the loan. And, um, uh, you know, I'm going to open up to questions very, very soon. If you've, if you've got very specific questions about how all that works, please do, do ask us. But, yeah, that's just a little bit about what it costs to do the course 
and about the um, audition process. Let's have a look at the next slide. There you go. That's kind of officially all of the slides. It's a little bit of an overview of what it might be like to do this year-long course. Um, yeah, Susan. Do you work? Why don't you take mine? Hello. Hello. Oh, Thank you. Um, that was a great introduction. Thank you very much, Mark. We've already got some questions online, okay. and we can always open up to the audience as well. So I'll pose the questions um, as they have come through. I think you've already answered the question about the audition process, yes. which is great. Does it matter for this course whether you've had any experience? Look, it's such a big question, isn't it, experience? Because all of our experiences in, in, in any area that we pursue are different. I like to think if you've got passion, if you've got real interest, you're, you're creative, you're thinking, gee, I, I love watching stuff, I love being in stuff, even though I haven't done much, I think give it a go. You know, we're really open to people of varying levels of experience for this course. In fact, we think it's terrific if a cohort in any one year, if people come from a real, you know, range of experience levels, because I think we've all got so much to offer each other as a group. Which is excellent. Uh, and then another question, how selective is the course? How many people usually audition and how many get accepted in? Thank you for that one, yeah. So diploma courses at NIDA, um, as I said, we've been offering them for probably around five years. And I reckon this year we expect to get, um, it's interesting because today we've got over 1,500 people putting up their hand for interest in this course. And for the other diploma courses like musical theatre, we've got almost another 1,000. So you can see there's a lot of interest in the course. We don't know how many of, of how many of those people will actually then apply, but we fully expect that for each of the diploma courses it will be several hundred people apply for around 22, no more than 24 places. So it is a little bit competitive because we, are, we know we're gonna have more people interested than we can take, but don't let that put you off. If you have an interest, if you're passionate about it, I'd say go for it because as, as we're saying, we do take people with a range of experiences. Maybe Rose, you could tell us, because you said you're straight from school, but some people aren't, are they, in your, no. in your year? We have, yeah, a variety, people who come from a variety of acting experience. I mean, I, I did have acting experience going into the course, but I have, like this term, uh, come to this epiphany that you know acting is not what I thought acting was, and in and in high school because that's where I straight away came from, it is completely different, and it is so fascinating to me to see that progression. I mean, we have, yeah, we've got people from a variety of um, ages as well, so it's like it is so good for us to you know work with some older people, um, and to get you know tips from them and then they get tips from us and it's, you know, this whole, like, collaborative bubble which I think is really, really awesome. But, yeah, I'd definitely say you don't have to have immense acting experience if you're interested in the course. Like Mark said, something that we all have in common who are doing the course right now is we are so, so incredibly passionate about it and we know for sure, you know, like, this is what we want to do. And even if you get to the end of the course and you're like, oh, maybe I want to do writing or maybe I want to do directing, you know, that's still really, really incredible too. So I think that it is, um, yeah, you clearly, you, you don't have to have, be, you know, have so much acting experience, try it. I mean, still the audition process, even for me, was so fun. It's, you do so many things and um, you get to watch a bunch of amazing people, yeah. Great, got another question here. Would you say that the diploma course is an ideal stepping stone for an individual who wants to study the Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in the future? Thank you for that. Look, again, that's so personal. You know, some of you will go, you know what, I want a year of intense study and then I'm going to have a look at what kind of opportunities there are. And others of you will be going, a year? 
that's, that's no way going to be enough for me. I, I need to really study this stuff and I want longer. I think the whole reason why NIDA offers now a range of um, opportunities uh, in this area is because each of you has different needs. For some people, a year is, is absolutely enough for you to learn enough to go and keep learning on the job. Let's face it, all of our working lives, all of us continue to learn. So for, young, for some people, a year is perfect. For others, it can be a stepping stone. Uh, Caitlin, who's in um, first year BFA this year, did the Diploma of Stage and Screen Performance previously. So she's back, she's, she's doing another three years. And you know, uh, fantastic, it's exactly what she wants to do. But other people don't want to do that. They go, no, I've done my year, I want to get out there and see what I can do. And, and, uh, and, and see what opportunities there are for me. So it's such a personal thing. So for some people, it's a hard question to answer. For some people, it can be a stepping stone. And, uh, and um, for others, it's, you know, uh, no, for some people, they just don't want to do four years. It's a big commitment. You've got to think that through as well if you want to do four years of study. Lovely. What are you looking for in video applications? Gosh, that's another big one too, isn't it? Look, I think you you want to do something that you enjoy. If if you have this interest in performance, show it to us in whatever way you can. Take delight in what you do. You know, if you think, oh, I'm really good at the funny stuff, or no, no, I'm really dark and dramatic, or or you know, I think do what you like doing. We're looking for people who. Um, not only um, you know have a, a strong interest, but who actually already have some skill in being able to either tell a story or entertain an audience. But there are so many ways to do that. So we just encourage each of you to really, whatever you choose to do on camera, make sure it's something that you feel good about and you feel is going to like either entertain us or surprise us or move us or make us laugh. I think uh, usually people who come to this course, you know, as I say, you're interested in performance. So you decide what's right for you and, and, uh, and make sure you, you enjoy doing that. And what makes you pick one applicant over another? Oh my God, these questions are so hard, aren't they? But look, that's a good question because we said we're gonna have hundreds of people apply and we can only take a, a limited number, which is a, in a way a good thing because we, if we had classes that had hundreds of people in them, that would that kind of wouldn't work. So, um, you know, we we can only take a limited number. You know what? It's in part the some of it you can't control. You know, it's in part the group makeup. You know, there's a whole number of us, a whole range of staff in the end that go. What if we had this person and this person and this person? And we really do uh, try and, um, I suppose, each year have what we think is a, is a community of people that will learn from each other as much as learn from the teachers that we know we're going to have. So you can't control that bit. You don't know what we're looking for there. And sometimes it's, uh, you know, it comes out of a lot of discussion and a lot of, um, you know, the teaching staff responding in different ways to the different applicants. So I just think, again, you can't control that. What you can control is actually um, making sure that you're, you're, you're uh, performing something that you feel good about for the audition. Um, so I don't even know if that answers the question, no, Susan. What do you reckon? I think it does, absolutely. Uh, so I've got a couple of questions here which are quite similar. So do high school gradings and results affect your chances of getting into the course or do you need a high ATAR score to be picked? The, in short, the answer is no to those. I think it's always good to finish your high school. You know, it's good stuff because you, you uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big milestone in your life, isn't it? But we have, I, I'm thinking too, this year we have um, a couple of people who did not finish their um, year 12 or HSC or VCE or, or wherever you're listening or watching from. 
So I think it's a good idea to finish your high school. It prepares you, you know, in all kinds of ways for the challenges because it is a challenging year, I, I think. You know, it's full on. It's quite demanding. We hope in a really good way. But, but it doesn't really affect your chances of getting in how you performed in high school. If, you're, if you've got a leaning towards this stuff and we think that the course can really help you move all that forward, then you've got as much a chance of getting into the course as somebody who's kind of been academically really, you know, um, capable in high school. Brilliant. Does NIDA offer scholarships? Well, let's go. <laughs> NIDA does offer scholarships. Uh, they're, you know, we're trying to grow the scholarship program um, each uh, year. And uh, what's amazing is, is in the last, um, you know, even in the last year, so much attention has been given to that area. Uh, at the moment, there is no scholarship for this course. So we're hoping that in the future we'll do that. So it is a full fee paying course. As I said, you can access, a lot of people are eligible to access the uh, student loan. And on our website, you can click a link that tells you if you are eligible for that student loan. So you need to inform yourself about that. Um, but at the moment, for this course, okay. there are no scholarships. Okay, thank you. So going back to the application process, and particularly with the video um, submission, what would you like to hear? Okay, so put simply, I think we ask for two contrasting pieces to camera. I was going to say the word monologues, a lot of you know what that word means, but look, honestly, as I said, a monologue implies that it's from a written script. I think your pieces to camera can be you telling us a story. It can be you talking to someone who's behind the camera and, in, and engaging them. What we're looking for is uh, people who are storytellers, who can embody a character, who can entertain an audience in some way. But that's a very big phrase. There's many ways to do that. So I think so long as you're showing us different sides of yourself in the two pieces, I think you're going to do well. Did you, how did you approach it, Rose? Did you do very contrasting uh, works for your audition? Do you remember? Yeah. <coughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, I, I looked at it. I wanted to do two contrasting pieces to show, you know, um, I guess, you know, either light and shade or, like, two different things that I thought. In initially, pick pieces that, um, that you want to do. You know, sometimes uh, people think that, oh, I'm going to pick this piece because it's hard and da 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 Like, simplicity is key. Pick something that you are drawn to, that you feel like is going to be fun to work on. Uh, do you, you do do one, like, classical piece? Is that the same? Look, we've, we've mixed it up a bit this year. Oh, that, okay. There's logic in that. You could go, you know what, I love this Shakespeare stuff, I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to do something really modern. But you don't have to. We're not looking for your abilities with classical text. Uh, we're really looking for you to be able to engage us with the pieces that you choose. So maybe what Rose was saying is absolutely spot on, something lighter and something a bit more dramatic. But that's quite broad. There'd be other ways of making sure your pieces were different from each other. Thank you. Right. What Will this diploma prepare me for a professional stage career? Well, we hope so. It, like any training in life, you know, as I said earlier, you, you keep learning on the job. I, I graduated from NIDA many years ago, and I tell my students that my... I, I, and I absolutely valued and loved every minute of being a NIDA student. But honestly, when I started working, uh, I had so many, so many rich learning experiences. So what you want from any training is that it prepares you enough to start working because your, your learning will continue and your growth will continue. So we like to think that in the year that you're with us in this course, we do indeed, from all of the expert 
trainers and guests and people that we bring into the course that we're able to give you a real direct kind of shorthand to this is essential, this will be essential, you need to know this, you need to explore this, you need to experience that. Everything is facing towards the, the entertainment arts industry, definitely. Brilliant. Uh, as, um, what high school subjects would be important for the course? Are there any other than drama that you would suggest? Well, you know, I always think it's probably... I know that a lot of you maybe are already doing drama-related stuff or have done if you are coming from school or even if you came many years ago. Um, but I think, honestly, as broad a reference point as we can have in life is better for the performing stuff. I think it's good if people have done sciences and sport and I'm just trying to think this year some of your fellow cohort... The, the range of interests is so broad. I know we've got people that are really into sport, that are into singing, that are into making music, that are into, um, like, Keenan does his own writing. <laughs> and Yeah, it, we have... Oh, it's like, even to think about, we have so, so many people with different interests. I mean, we've got people, interest, we've got people interested... Um, you know, about medicine. We've got a, a doctor, a lawyer... Uh, Yes, yeah, science, visual arts, music. We've got a lot of people who are really into singing and music, um, which is which is amazing because our course also sort of incorporates. We get to work with Philip Quast, who is a very experienced uh, actor and director, and we get to do a lot of a lot of things about you know you know rhythm and voice work with him, Shakespeare. Yeah, I guess when it comes to subjects, we we if you don't do drama, it's it's definitely not a big issue at all. I know some people in our cl in our current cohort didn't do drama for their HSC. I did, but it's yeah, it's definitely not a requirement, I'd say. But yeah, as Mark said, like do what you're interested in. Do you know if you're interested in science, do science, maths, you know. The broader I think the better. So. And, and bring that along. And also you can hear in what Rose just said is that this year we, we do have people who have uh, bringing other professional skills in, into their group. They have, there, there is someone who's trained to be a lawyer and is someone who's trained to be a doctor. So the age range, for those of you who are interested, in the cohort this year is from around 18 to 30. We think that's a good thing. We think it's good to bring together a community of people who, between them, have all kinds of experiences. We think that's good for everyone. So that what you'd find in this course is you wouldn't find yourself with 21 other 18-year-olds who've done drama at school. We actually do mix it up and we really welcome people from uh, different areas of discipline, different levels of experience, different cultural backgrounds, different... Uh, you know, plans for the future. We really like to, uh, cre you know, have a community of people who can offer each other all kinds of things. There's a question in the audience. Question from the audience. Yes, we haven't even offered you the opportunity. Please go. Absolutely, please do. So yes, that was a quick one. So maybe we've got time for more. Who else has got one? Yes. Sorry, Susan, you. Thank 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 so if you're doing things, so long as they do not clash with your course requirements, you can do it in this course. If you get a short film gig on a Saturday, you know, filming over several Saturdays, do it, because you're not meant to be at night or on Saturdays. So we, we encourage you, everybody uses their personal time differently, so long as you've got enough time to be ready for your classes the following week. If you're the kind of person that's got energy to fit in other things, you're welcome to do that. You just can't miss the classes that you're scheduled to do. You have to do your coursework. Lovely, 
I, absolutely, yeah. If you go, I like this piece, this makes sense to me, I'm going to do something with it, do it. It doesn't matter what context it's from, you can, you can change that context, you can make it your own. Absolutely. What's really important is you've got to feel uh, that you enjoy doing whatever you choose to do. Jump in. I think Ash might let us go for a minute or two. I know he said we're over time. What do you think? Quickly. Minimum age, look, we like you to be turning uh, 18 fairly shortly after the course has started, if not before the course has started. I, I put it that way because we have at times thought, this person will get so much out of the course, will bring a lot to the course, and they are a little bit young, but we know that they're, they're, their time is right for the course. Strictly speaking, we welcome people 18 years and over, but we have taken people who are 17, about to turn 18, and there's no upper limit. As we've just said, we do have people who are, uh, you know, I think around 30 is the oldest person this year in the course. There's another question, go. Yes, you. Well, again, very big question, but we like to think that, um, you know, if you have particular um, circumstances or needs that are real to you and they don't align with what we expect from you, that we negotiate something. You tell us, we talk. It's important for us to know uh, any, any circumstances that may impact on your training before the course so that we can accommodate them. We are so genuine about the fact that all of us... Um, you know, are individuals and we all have our own particular needs and viewpoints and reference points and backgrounds and experiences and we want to celebrate, you know, we want to celebrate us all in all of our, you know, diversity and that can mean so many things. So if there's something that is very particular to you that you think, oh, this might, uh, this might impact on my training and you're happy to talk to us about it, please do. We're really open and flexible. We know that human beings don't come in, you know, one shape and size, and we like to think that the course is open and available to all of us. So I don't know what your, when you say physical, I don't know what that is, and you don't, you don't have to tell us here and now, but um, if there are things you can or can't do, um, maybe tell us when you come and meet us, or maybe tell us on the, on the video um, segment where you tell us a bit about yourself. That would be great. We don't know what time we are. Okay. Um, <laughs> just to let you know, with the questions that you've all submitted uh, via Slido, if you make sure that you leave your email addresses, um, we'll make sure that this, the answers are sent out as well. And we do this talk again a little later today if you want to come back. Also, find us in the foyer, find us in a room, and we'll keep talking. We're very happy to keep talking to you today. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Rose. You're welcome. Thanks, Susan.